is it? Because I married an American girl. Ah. Yeah, she's from Alabama. We're all tied. So she Whatever that means. But her parents are from Texas. We got married in El Paso. I checked. The gun was loaded. So. <laughs> Uh, when, you, when I sing a song like that in a pub, or when Dermot does, like, part of the piece is, is to demean it, but it's uh, like, often at a session, if you have a new person who arrives in and not very many people know them, they'll, they'll sit in and they'll join in and they'll all play a few tunes and whatever is going on, and then the, the stranger to the table will be asked to do something on his or her own. They'll be like, oh, sure, you pick a tune, give us no tune there. And you'll be, it's not really to test you, or it's just to kind of, introduce you to everybody in the pub, like it's something a little bit different. So most of the musicians will put down their instruments and listen to the first tune. And they'll, you'll do it on your own maybe, and you know, you'll be playing away, and then you might say, the Masons are something common or popular, or else you just go straight into it. And then the other musicians are like, oh yeah, fair play, that was a good tune. And they all join in again, and, the, and that's when the audience goes, woo! And it's, it's a proper session then. And it's the same with singers, uh, and singing happens very frequently in pubs in the countryside. I don't know, particularly on the weekends, because they're all farmers and stuff, so they're, they're all busy working during the week, and they'll come into the pubs on the weekends for their session and their few pints. And if you're a stranger, you guys, if you walk into one of these sessions, I can guarantee you two things that will always happen. The first one is, everybody in the room will go quiet and they'll stare at you. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is, eventually somebody will talk to you. Now, if you read about Ireland in a guidebook, I don't know which books you've read or why you even came to Ireland. We particularly like Rick Steves. Has anybody read Rick Steves? Book? Yeah, yes. he put it, he put my picture in his book and gave us three triangles. Whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I took him out and got him drunk one night. Was but uh, I didn't. He had a glass of Guinness. And then he went home. He takes his work very seriously. It was funny. I went I went for a drink with Rick Steves and then he came to the pub club. He says, "I love the pub club, but I come every year just to make sure you're you're as good as you used to be." That's great, fine. And then three days later, he was on the pub call again with his wife and two of his kids. And I said, what the hell are you doing back here again? I said, no, I enjoyed it. I thought my wife and kids would do it. Two teenage boys, they were like this. They <laughs> 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 had a great time. Uh, <laughs> I score 100 birds. But, um, I was going to say, I've completely forgotten what I was saying. Oh yeah, the other thing is, somebody will talk to you in Ireland. I said guidebooks, yeah, because it's written about Ireland that Irish people are friendly. It's not true. Irish people are nosy. <laughs> <laughs> and what you think is a polite conversation is actually a mild interrogation. <laughs> it's a line of questioning that goes along like, oh, where are you from? Where are you going? Where have you been? How long are you staying? Have you any brothers and sisters? What's your father's name? What's your mother's name? No, what's your mother's maiden name? <laughs> They're basically trying to establish whether or not you're an English spy, a policeman, a tax inspector, or if your great-great-grandfather owes them money. <laughs> and an easy way to establish this in front of a whole room is to say, after a conversation, they will say, Asher, give us an L song. And you're expected to sing a song then. And they'll knock on the table like, uh, I have, for example, what's your name? Life. Dave. Life. Life. Oh, I forgot you're from Norway. Life. From Norway. So I'd say, I'm going to speak to Life from Norway here. And Life is going to sing a song about how his great 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 grandfather came to Ireland and stole my great 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 grandmother <laughs> and moved to Iceland to set up a commune, a hippie commune in the uh, 900s. So he might sing a song about, you know, seal clubbing or. <laughs> <laughs> Or raping and pillaging or stealing all from the other. <laughs> and there'll be women and debauchery and pints involved. And we'll all go, yay! A true Norwegian. <laughs> and uh, somebody will buy him a pint. And when it comes to one o'clock in the morning, when the barman is kicking everybody else out of the pub, get out, we're closed, leave, someone will grab Leaf there and say, you're all right, Leaf. You're one of us now. Do you want another pint? And you say, oh, the pub's closed, not for you. You're okay. They'll close all the shutters on the outside and turn off the lights so the police don't know you're in there. Unless the police are in there drinking. <laughs> <laughs> he, all he did was smirk. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're drinking with the police. Who's going to arrest them? Right? So uh, you'll have a pint. You're in what we call a lock-in then. And that's when everybody will start to take turns to sing songs and the party goes on. It's a really good thing. It's not a lock-in. Really, it's a lock-out. It's a stop now regulars coming in and once you're inside and you're probably the ashtrays will come out of the table as well the irish thinking being if you're going to be arrested for drinking late you might as well be caught smoking as well <laughs> <laughs> i don't even smoke and i'm tempted when the ashtrays come out like, breaking the law cool oh, I get smoking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you'll be singing the song so basically what, what i want to try and do 
is to get. Now we have Norway here, and we have America. Did you just Israel? We have Israel here. Israel, well. Israel there. Yeah. Uh, mostly America, but I would love to hear a song. Well, and we have Germany here. The Germans have lots of drinking songs. Here. No, I have to watch what these girls are drinking because they only drank half their Guinness. That looks mm -hmm. like water to me. Yeah, that's better as a bug. Bug and bitter lemon. I reckon it's not up in here. I'm like a vampire wanting to drink. <laughs> but um, I would love to hear a song from one of you guys. Now, there's a couple of rules before you all rush to volunteer. And we did get you said it at musicians, and a few people took up their hands. Uh, I think one of these is probably a drummer. Yeah. Hello. Hands going. No. But uh, Just here, here's a couple of rules. You can sing a song in any language, including Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> you can sing a rock and roll, pop, opera, we don't care. Uh, whatever it is, as long as you bring something to our table. The one exception is American Pie is banned. <laughs> <laughs> or anything from Glee. <laughs> and here's a rule of thumb, this goes for the whole country in general. If you're really brilliant, don't show up the local musicians. You know, do something kind of under the radar to start off with. And come the end of the night, you can do whatever the hell you want, you'll be accepted. But if you start off too showy, like when you're singing a song, don't do an X Factor on it. Don't be wobbling your lower lip and going into the high rhythm. <laughs> Jazz hands are banned as well. Uh, for Irish people, the song is more important band. than the singer. No. So we just want to hear the song. So bearing all of those things in mind, and also hugely important, not to sing is bad manners. If somebody asks you to sing, you should probably bring something to the table. The idea is you don't never come empty-handed if you have a song. So would anybody like to uh, volunteer one of their friends, because everybody's too shy to actually volunteer themselves. Yeah, so they're all pointing over here. These are the musicians as well. You can borrow my guitar. You can come and tune it up for me. What are we doing? What are we doing? I don't know. Beautiful. Anybody like to sing something? I know. I nominate this guy. Yeah, right here. Well, go ahead. If he's ready. Do have to. Yeah. So you look like. Hmm? You can sing it any language, but any style. Anything at all. Just tell people who you are. My style is tuning. It is. I think so. <laughs> oh, I'll, sit, I'll sit here beside your boyfriend. Sorry. I thought you were going to No, no. Usually, when well, usually when somebody gets up to sing a song, it's like the bloke gets up and is a hot shaker. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Max. I'm from Manchester, but I lived in Israel for 15 years. I was born in Russia. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know which tune to play. Actually, I play guitar for five years, and I'm a singer as well. People should be happy or sad. Whatever you like. Yeah. Just remember, all these people paid money. <laughs> That's you, that's me. <laughs> 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 um, play something simple. Uh, it's a tune by Alex Turner, an English songwriter. It's called uh, Glass in a Park. <laughs> Another two. <laughs> um, bonus two. Arctic monkeys. Oh, okay. <laughs>
Anything 